everybody. This is Joe Joseph, and this is the DailySheeple.com's news shot. Let's go cosmic, shall we? As we go to fizz.org, that's right, the physics uh, peer-reviewed publication site. And uh, we have Cassini finds Saturn's moon and Saladius may have tipped over. Now, this uh, moon on Saturn is very interesting. It's an icy moon. It's one that scientists believe there can be uh, possible life on underneath the ice or perhaps in the ice. But the fact that there's evidence that it's tipped over is quite interesting because we've heard a lot of uh, scientists come out recently and talk about how our poles are moving faster and faster towards the equator. Um. And that's indicative of a pole reversal. And it happens from time to time. The magnetic record in rocks show that the magnetic poles have indeed moved and flipped uh, various times throughout the history of the Earth. And that we're due for one. And the magnetic field of the Earth is showing signs that we're due for one because the magnetic field needs to regenerate itself from time to time. And normally, this is the event that kicks the reset off, is a, is a pole reversal. Now, what happens when a pole reversal occurs? Well, uh, uh, there's a couple of things. First of all, the orbit of the Earth can change. Or not the orbit, the rotation. And how the Earth rotates can change because now your magnetic north and south or a little bit different. I remember the story, the day the earth stood still. And I truly believe that the day the earth stood still was a pole reversal where the earth starts rotating the other way. Because, you know, just like when you have magnets and you change pole positions, you can actually influence the spin and direction of another object that's within that its grasp, and if you reverse the poles, it goes the opposite way. So it's very interesting that they now see evidence of this type of activity on another celestial body in our solar system, and it's just more evidence to me that these events do occur, and that I think a lot of people take for granted the life that we have here on Earth, the fact that... Uh, you have scientists like Stephen Hawking and billionaires like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk that have hit the fast forward button big time on getting humanity off this planet. And then you have, of course, the scientific community over at CERN and other particle accelerators throughout the world that are trying to figure this stuff out, how to manipulate matter at a subatomic level, and I mean, when I say subatomic, I mean these particles are just unbelievably tiny, but they're trying to get to be able to manipulate matter and manipulate the construct to the point where you wouldn't need ships for space travel or anything like that, that you just merely walk through a portal, a Tower of Babel, if you will, a Stargate. It's all quite possible, and it's what these researchers are really looking at, but this again, it's just very interesting. We have evidence within our own solar system of another planet or uh, another moon or celestial body that's going through exactly what scientists are saying the Earth is going through right now and just gives more evidence that these things do happen and it's smart to be prepared for something like that. And one thing they say is that don't live, if you can avoid living by a coastline, that would be uh, a good thing because... In the event of a cataclysm, such as a pole reversal, uh, one thing that they do say is that you'd have tidal waves, big-time tidal waves that would take out a lot of the coastlines. And 80% of the population in the United States live within 60 miles, 80 miles of the coast. Then you have volcanoes, right? Uh, you got the super volcano over in uh, Yellowstone. That goes off? Oh, man, it could be a bad day. You know? These pole reversals have a... Um, like I said, a very cataclysmic consequences. Think about nuclear power plants. 
what happens when there's a volcano or an, or an earthquake? They've built, I can't remember how many, like 23 on fault zones, on, on literal faults in the United States alone. They put 23 nuclear power plants that with huge, huge spent fuel pools and uh, these dry storage casks that just sit. What happens when something like that happens and all of these uh, nuclear power plants melt down? The hell with nuclear war. I mean, if you have something like this, it's going to be instant uh, extermination, uh, extinction level event because of just what we have, these ticking time bombs that we have all over the world that nobody thinks about. You know, Fukushima taught us a lot of lessons that we should be learning from and doing things about that we're doing nothing about. Just food for thought. I'm Joe Joseph. This was the DailySheeple.com's news shot. Feel free to comment below and visit our website at thedailysheeple.com. Have a great day, everybody.